Today we're going to do some gear testing. We've got Jack Youngquist from Ronix hosting us. We've got Robbie Allen from Orlando Wake Academy out here to test some stuff with us. We've got uh, the microphone set to the BB Cam app on uh, the BB Talking headset, so you'll be able to hear first impressions when Robbie and I go test some of the new 2023 gear. We've got a whole bunch of setups. I'm going to start out with the Parks package. So I've heard really good things about this, and it's a totally new shape for this year. So I want to get warmed up on this and see how she goes. All right, so first impressions on the boots. I really like the upgrades of the Parks boots. Um, don't put paper in it when you ride, though. Uh, oh, my gosh, there's more. Fresh from the box, proof. Uh, okay, so they are so much better, I think, than last year. Huge improvement. There's like, uh, I don't know, like little grooves on the bottom of the footbed, which they're kind of, they feel kind of cool tactile-wise. I didn't expect that. They're a lot softer than last year's. Like they actually, they're like foamier, pillowier. I like that. The toe box is super soft. Like if you can, I don't know if you can see on my toes. Yeah, these are nice. Woo! <laughs> oh, it's not summer. He is a Florida man. <laughs> oh, my pasty white skin is evidence I haven't been outside much. All right, here we go. <laughs> Woo! It sits high on the water. Holy crap. That's awesome. Wow. That's not what I expected. It's just different. Yeah, those little dimples on the bottom actually do a lot. Like, but then it edges nice. So when it's flat, super loose, but on edge, it's pretty good. Ollie is great. All right, see how she straight airs. Whoa! Yeah, it rides high on the water. It's a little different. Woo! Slow down a little. That's like I was saying, it doesn't want to lock in on edge. That tactile feedback wasn't there. It's hard to feel the right trip at the top. It's definitely different because it does sit really high on the water. So, it, like, it's fast. It's a lot faster than I was expecting. There's no, like, grooves or channels to make it feel like it's going to, like, sit and sink hard on an edge like the one does where I feel like coming up the wake I'm more locked in. I'm not quite as locked in, but it's so much more forgiving. So it just takes me a minute to get adjusted, right? Like, I'm way used to the – to the uh, the one time bomb. It's fun though, like all the surface tricks, all your basic stuff feels really good. I'll try a couple wake to wake tricks and see if I can adjust quickly enough. See how just like a stock back roll feels, see if it can hold edge through the wake good. Woo! Dang that like Carrie's speed. I think Carrie, that was awesome. Like, I had to slow awesome. it down. <laughs> Interesting. Let's see how blind landings are. All right. Yeah. Getting the hang of it. So the landings are awesome. Really like that. Feels comfy, nice and smooth. The back roll had lots of, like, speed with it. Yeah, like, that landing felt like nothing. Like, you know where you try to, like, land and slap the water? Like, it doesn't make that noise. You can't make it go whack. Like, it's really hard. You have to force that. Yeah, it doesn't sink in as deep on edge, so it changes the way a few tricks feel, but... Ah, yeah, getting the hang of it. I will say my feet are starting to go numb. I may have tightened it too tight. 
the boots come off super easy. These things open up so wide. I like just loosen the laces and kick my feet, just float it right off. Cool. Well, that thing's super fun. I definitely have some opinions on it. This thing was really fun, and it's really fast and rides really high on the water. These dimples worked really well. So where this would really do well for someone is, like, if you're trying to go wake to wake for the first time, casing the wake is not going to be that bad on this board. You're also going to have more across trajectory, and it's going to force you to use your edges. So it won't work unless you're edging properly. So it's a little harder to find that sunk in on edge. So if you like a board that when it's on edge, it sits really deep and feels really locked in, this is not it. But for my like 360, 540, felt great. The takeoff was great, the landings were great. I feel like I can make a lot of mistakes on this board and still right away. The boots are really good, but because they are that like spongy foam and not the um, like intuition liners, you know how the intuition liners like they pack in and break into you and they don't, the foam doesn't want to expand and push back at your foot. Whereas if it's just like straight up normal foam, it, it's constantly wanting to go back to shape. So that's what I was not used to with these and I over tightened. And so on the outside of the boot right here, if you feel underneath, there's like a little bit of an extra pad on the tongue that stops right here. So right here, I, I tightened it too much, so there's a little too much pressure for me because it was pushing back. I just over-tightened my boots, so that was just one little thing I noticed. But it's not gonna, it's not gonna be a problem once you get like the tension adjusted. But if you're used to the Intuition liners, you'll notice the difference in the foam. So if you're wondering if it's worth upgrading because you want to get that extra feel, like oh, is the foam really that different? I actually I can notice. But if you're coming from like open toe boots, these are like, this is the perfect spot right in between that open toe experience and getting more of a closed toe experience without having to spend the high end closed toe money. This package is solid, especially for someone trying to go wake to wake for the first time, maybe learning their first few flips, especially learning surface tricks, being able to ride switch and regular. I mean, yeah, this felt great. I, I, I would get used to this if I rode it all the time and that like not sitting deep on edge, I would learn to adapt to it. But it was fun. Like I was pleasantly surprised at just how playful it was. This is crazy light. That's wild. We don't have the 146, so this is the 142 that I'll be testing. I'll, I'll get on the 146 in the future, but I just wanted to try this out with this core material. Um, being upgraded for 2023. So this is the blackout core. It feels lighter than previous years. And then when I flex tested it on the ground, it felt like it had a little bit of spring to it, whereas previously they were just super rigid. So I, I liked riding the time bomb previously because it had a little bit of spring in its step. We'll see what this feels like. Blower's on. After going from the parks boot to these, if you're on the fence, about going high end, I'll just say right now it's worth it. These are so comfortable. I forgot how nice they were. Well, oh, these feel good. Trying to buckle my safety hat. Here we go. Oh, yeah. There she is. That's the shape I'm used to. Yeah, it really locks in on edge so much better than the parks especially being smaller. All right, so I don't kill myself. Let's just do a nice little easy straight air, make sure everything's working. Whoa, way different. Woo. Got to get acclimated again. For me, it's the size difference. Felt like I punched the nose through the wake. This definitely sits deeper in the water. But I tell you what, it does have a little spring in its step.
I like it a lot. It's light. It's fast. Locks in on edge. It's that great feel. Um, aside from the size I felt at home on it, I could totally ride this and be happy with it. This is awesome. Like, it, it might replace the time bomb for me this year. I really like the new core material a lot. So it now has that, like, kind of springy, snappier feel. It locks in so good on edge, and then when it's flat, it's nice and neutral, and it's so user-friendly. I really like this board. And the boots were awesome. Felt right at home. No complaints. Super light. Um, like, noticeably lighter than last year. This feels really good. Uh, just in the hand, I think it would be a blast to to test. So we'll see how that goes. And then I'll give you guys kind of my thoughts on the RXT boot differences, the one versus RXT versus Time Bomb versus Blackout, and then the upgrades to the Blackout core this year, already a big fan of. So this will be really fun. Your Apple calendar would like you to know that you have a dentist appointment today at 10 a.m. Uh, no, I changed that. <laughs> All right, new closure system. Okay, I got to adjust that already. That super strap on the top was too long for me. But once you get it dialed in, it'll be really fast. It's just this is the first time, so it's going to take a sec. That's different. It's like micro adjustable, so i got to figure out exactly how I like it to feel. That already feels really cool. Sounds really loud, too. <laughs> I do like the upper strap. So normally the laces... When you tighten up the upper, the front part of the of the boot is like the least flexible because the laces are nylon and they don't move. But this has that like rubber piece on the side here. And so when I go forward, it, the tongue actually flexes out a little bit. So this, this feels softer than the lace-up RXTs. Even though you've got the like cable BOA system on the bottom, it's still like... A little softer. Interesting. Oh yeah, RXT sits deeper. Whoa, whoa, very different. Woo! So much more rocker. So different. His boots are nicer to adjust on the fly, I will say. This thing is really poppy. Like that extra rocker, you can really feel it. But it feels light. See how a normal wake jump is. Whoa! I didn't even stand up all the way. This thing is edgy. Holy cow. Oh, yeah. So complete opposite of the parks. <laughs> like this is a 144, the parks is a 145. The parks feels way bigger than this from like a, like how high it sits on the water, all the surface area. This definitely sits way deeper, it's super edgy, like real sensitive. Let's see what a back roll does. I'm probably gonna overcook this thing. The standard normal back roll. Woo! Yeah, I wants to go. I do feel like you can ride this board bigger than you normally would because this feels like the 142 one board size. So don't let the 148 size scare you. It does feel lightweight like the like the blackout, the 142, even though it's bigger, it feels just as light. So I could totally go 48 and not be like, oh, this is big. All right, see how the blind landings feel. Woo, almost lost the rope there. Feels good. It's fast, too. Like, yeah, interesting. Man, it just takes off solid. The pop is so good. 
I will say it lands good, but it does land a little slow. It doesn't carry as much speed on the landing just because it's got more rocker. The landings are soft, but they're not as fast. It's edgy. This is fun. I can get used to this. What are we thinking? Uh, it's definitely really consistent from like a walks in on edge, rides to the wake the same every time on the way up, but it's super poppy because of how much rocker it has. It's way edgier. Doesn't sit as high on the water. It's not quite as fast, but really consistent. Yeah, it's fun. The only thing I didn't like about the bow is it's hard to tell how tight I want to tighten it when I'm on the back of the boat. Once I start riding, it seems to adjust in, and then I got to make micro adjustments. You're like you saw me out there, like, but it's easy to make micro adjustments. But with the laces, I don't feel like I have to do that so much. I feel like I lace them up once, and it, I don't need to change it. But I don't know. I mean, it's we're splitting hairs at this point. I don't think there's that much difference when you're actually out there riding. You won't notice. So if you like the top being a little bit more flexible, um, this does it. Because once this is attached here, this will stretch a bit, right? So when you lean into it, it'll give more than the laces. Um, and I really liked that when I was playing around. Um, yeah, I mean, splitting hairs. Which color you like the most? That's my review. Let's see how this goes. This is super different for this year, and it's really light. Um, yeah, that's really light. This will be fun. Holy crap, that's different than it was the last time I tried it. This is not the same wakeboard. Whoa, it locks in on edge, like, the fins are all the same size, but the way that this thing sits in the water, whoo, it's poppy, though. Different, though. It's not as tail-heavy poppy. It's more, more different. All right, straight air, see how she goes. It's a little slower. Not bad, though. Whoa. It's edgy. I didn't expect that. That's fun. I don't know what to think of it yet. Yeah. New sensation. I don't really know how to describe it. But I like it. There we go. <laughs> the front rolls work on this. It does not release as early. Like, it wants to stay tracking all the way till you leave the, the water. Rock solid blind landing. Whatever you guys did, you made it on par with the RXT and the one. Like, it's freaking there. It's just different. Very interesting. It's definitely locked in all the way through the wake, like doesn't want to let go, which is good for people who tend to slip up the wake, like intermediate rider would love that. The pop is great. Rock solid pop. Um, just different. I don't even know how to explain it. It's like so hard to, you know, different flavor. Whoa. Okay, interesting. Way snappier on heel side front flips than the one. At least the way I do them. Whoa. That was weird. That was just me going early. It's really fun. It's a rock solid board. Definitely releases late. It's not skatey and high on the water and loose like the others. I don't think it's my board for the year only because 
it would take me some getting used to, and I really don't like how stuck to the water it is. But it definitely, like, you saw me riding when I was, like, casually trying to just go from regular to switch, and it was like, whomp, right? There were some things I liked more, like some parts of this I liked more than the others. But I don't know that overall it was enough to bring me off of the one. The RXT could if I tried in the right size. I think the one is still, I just feel the most at home on. However, if you've tried the Supreme before and you were like, eh, I don't know, it's kind of fun but wasn't really my jam, try it again. Let it win you over again. It looks the same. It is not the same. Um, that was awesome. That was a really fun board. And then after going laces and boa, I think I like the laces just a little bit more, only because I'm so used to them, right? It's just so normal for me. It does, I don't even think about my boots. But I, I like the more subtle white over the highlighter orange. But yeah, my body is toast. That was a ton of sets. Thanks, guys. That was good. We'll give you a more thorough rundown once we get back inside. Before we get into how each board performed individually, I wanted to give you a little bit of background on my personal bias and talk a little bit about preferences. So anytime you test a wakeboard, what you're going to be doing is measuring the performance of that board against how you personally like it. Now when you're starting out, you don't really have those preferences built yet. So as you develop those preferences and spend more time on the board, you'll notice what you do and don't like. And over the years, you'll be able to build your own profile of what you would like in a board. But since we can't all have our own pro model board, it's good to know what your preferences are and how they stack up against some of the boards that are available out there. Now, when we get into my personal preferences specifically, so you can understand where I'm coming from on this review, I wanted to dive into each of these categories independently. So when it comes to how heavy or how light and agile I prefer the board, I like it on the lighter, more agile side. Now some of you may be asking why would anyone want it on the heavier side, but there are some riders that do prefer a heavier wakeboard. Um, I know of some pro models where the pro rider said, hey, it was too light. I want you to add a little bit more weight to this because the board does carry momentum into some of the tricks and it changes the way that it feels. I just prefer the more light and agile side. Uh, a lot of people do. That's that's pretty common. Uh, top water speed, I prefer it to be a little bit higher and faster on the water. I don't like feeling that drag and feeling like I'm bogged down. It's easier on the body, easier on the arms, and I just feel like I'm floating more on the water. I really prefer that. Edging profile. Now, this is where it gets kind of opposite. When I edge, I like it to be uh, really sensitive. I like the the rail of my board to be really crisp and slice through the water really nicely. Um, some board profiles are hard to get that top water speed to be high and fast while also having a low and sensitive edging profile. So it's uh, that's kind of a big ask uh, on in my preferences. Uh, impact absorption. So this is if you were landing flat without trying to carry speed, how soft it would be. I, I really like having a soft landing. Uh, I feel like it, it allows me to wakeboard longer as my body and ages and my joints age. Uh, impact momentum. So this is how much momentum the board carries as it lands. So I do prefer it to be a little bit on the faster side, but it's not as big of a deal for me as the impact absorption. When it comes to traction, I favor a looser board. I don't want it to be too extreme. Um, I do like to have some traction in there. Um, but if I have the option, I, I lean towards the looser side. I do like that, that freer feel. So now that you know where my preferences lie, let's take a look at how some of these other boards performed when I tested them. Starting at the top in the weight category, I noticed that the One, the RXT, and the Supreme were all so light and agile that I could not tell them apart. They were shockingly light when you pick them up, when you take them out of the tower, it was really impressive. The parks felt really light and agile when I was riding it because it's so thin, the swing weight is really low. But when I was moving it around on, on the back of the boat, I, it just felt like a normal wakeboard. It didn't surprise me with how light it was like the others did. So they're, they're all pretty light and agile uh, with the parks just slightly more centered. 
top water speed, the Parks is the highest and fastest by far. Um, the one leans towards the high and fast side because it has less rocker uh, and a relatively smooth bottom. Uh, it, it really carries speed nicely. Uh, the RXT has a lot more rocker, so it sits a little deeper. And the Supreme, uh, I did notice when I was edging out and coasting that the Supreme would, would drag a little. I noticed it slowing down a little. It, again, it wasn't extreme it, and it didn't feel bad necessarily, but it was enough to notice. The edging profile, the park sits higher on the water and is a little more mellow on edge. Uh, the one felt like it, it sits right in the middle, kind of in that sweet spot between sensitive and mellow. Um, the Supreme trailing right behind it, maybe on the slightly more sensitive side um, because I did notice it was really edgy at times when I wanted it to be. Uh, and then the RXT was the edgiest of the bunch. It was the most sensitive. You could go from nothing to everything really quick and it would respond very quickly. Uh, so that, that's how those stacked up in the edging profile. Impact absorption. The Parks was the pillowiest if you were to land on the flat. Uh, it, it really absorbed a lot. Uh, the RXT, because of the extra rocker, was right behind that. And then the one, uh, a little bit more uh, centered than the others. And then the Supreme was more on the firm side. Now, this is not a bad thing. Uh, when I was younger, I preferred it to, to have a more solid, firm, stomped feeling when I landed tricks. And uh, my preferences have just moved away from that a little bit. But... Uh, it's a really good feeling. Uh, it's just a little more firm when when you, when you land with the Supreme. Uh, impact momentum. When I was on the parks, that thing just carried loads of speed into the wake and into the landing. Um, the rest of them were pretty centered. I had to really think to differentiate them on that. I feel like the one was a little bit um, faster uh, than the RXT and the Supreme. Uh, the RXT had... Uh, a little more rocker, um, but it edges real nice, so it kind of felled. It, it kind of fell right in the middle, and then the Supreme maybe slightly slower, just because of that impact absorption. Right, it felt real firm when it landed. It didn't really want to carry tons of speed. It's not really a board that favors going way out into the flats. Uh, traction, the the Supreme going from left to right here. The Supreme was the tightest. I felt like even though they all had the same size fins um, the supreme the way the channels flowed into the fin and the way the board was shaped just made it track tighter the rxt was more in the middle uh, the one a little bit looser and then the parks was very loose because the those dimples underneath created a lot of turbulence in front of the fin and so the fin was a little less effective um, but uh, but that's how that stacks up in in the traction field so overall this is what that looks like. I had a really great time on all of these. Uh, I would say the one and the RXT are closest to my preferences. Uh, I did really like the parks though. It was just so fun because of how extreme it was on, on the, like how forgiving it is, how high it rides on the water, how fast. Uh, so I, I would be tempted to have a parks in my quiver just when I was in the mood to go ride the parks board to go hop on it and play around because it was so much fun. But I, I'm still up in the air between the one and the RXT. I'm gonna try the appropriate sizes and then make my decision from there. But uh, hopefully this process helped you uh, see what to look for in your next board or if you're considering one of these and you're not really sure what it would be like and, and it's hard to get out and demo one yourself. Hopefully this gives you somewhat of an idea and uh, Go over to wakecoaches.com and reach out to us and we're happy to get you in the right gear with the right coach, progressing and learning a ton this summer. Thanks so much for your time and we will see you out there.